Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make chicken pot pies, and this is what they look like. What you have is a buttery crisp pastry on top with a little Parmesan cheese, and underneath you have chunks of uh, roast chicken and all kinds of vegetables in a really nice cream sauce. So, the first thing we need to uh, do is to make our pastry. So I'm gonna do it in a food processor. You don't have to, you could just do it by hand, but uh, this is a really fast way to do it. So you will need one and two thirds cups, which is 220 grams of all purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. Let's put that. And then you will need to add to that, whoops, one tablespoon, 15 grams of granulated white sugar, and a half a teaspoon, two grams of salt. Now, if you're doing this by hand, just whisk all these ingredients together. I'm just going to pulse this for a second. Mix it together. And then we need some butter. You will need 10 tablespoons, which is 140 grams of butter. You want it cold, nice and cold. And then I like to cut it into these uh, small pieces so it's easier to uh, cut the butter into the flour. I'll just put that over the top. Now if you're doing this by hand, you just cut the butter into the flour. You could use a pastry blender, you could use two knives, you could really just use your fingertips. And what we're going to do is work it in until you have like coarse crumbs. And don't worry if there's a few big pieces of butter at the end, that's okay. Whoops. Dropped a piece. Okay. You can see that was only like maybe what, 10 seconds, 15, something like that. So this is what you're looking for. You can see there's, there is little chunks of butter in there. And like I said, a few larger ones is absolutely fine. So now we're gonna add some uh, ice water and I just put, in the measuring cup, I just put some ice and then put some water over there, get nice and cold. And now, flour, depending on how it's stored, will absorb different amounts of water. So I'm gonna say four to five tablespoons, but I'm not gonna add that all at once. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add about three. And then I'm going to mix that. Now, if you're doing this by hand, just toss it with a fork. And what you're looking for, you're not looking for a solid ball of pastry. You're just looking, it, it'd still be kind of rough, and then when you kind of take some between your fingers, it'll hold together. And I'm just going to pulse this. Okay, Let's scrape down. And it's just stick in the corners. So I that was three tablespoons. Now I definitely need a little more. You can just tell by looking at it. I'm gonna add another tablespoon. Okay. Okay, so now you can see. That's what you're looking for. But in the bowl, it's still like kind of loose. So what I'm going to do now is just put it in on a piece of plastic wrap, form it into a round, and then we're going to put it into the refrigerator to chill. So just kind of, I just do it right on the plastic wrap so that way I don't mess up my counter and just form it into a nice round, like so. And then wrap it up and put it into the refrigerator. And then when we come back, we're gonna start our chicken filling. So now for our chicken filling. You will need a large skillet and put that, get, start to heat up my pan, medium high heat. And what I'm going to do is add one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of oil, 15 grams each. So just get that going. 
If you didn't want to add butter, you don't have to. I think it adds to the flavor when we're sauteing our vegetables, but you could just use all uh, oil if you would prefer that. And then what you will need once we get that bubbling is you will need one cup, 140 grams of finely chopped onions. That's, that's pretty good. And you will need one cup, 140 grams of carrots, of course, peeled and chopped into small piece, bite-sized pieces. A half a cup, 65 grams of, you know, fairly finely chopped celery. And one cup, 90 grams of mushrooms, any type you want to use, and chop those into bite-sized pieces. Of course, you could bury your vegetables. If you don't like mushrooms, you can just leave that out. And of course, I just like to add, when I'm sauteing vegetables, I like to add a little salt. How much salt? I know people want to know how much salt. Um, but you know, everybody uh, likes a different amount. I would say maybe a half a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon. So what I'm going to do is just uh, saute this over medium high heat until the uh, onions get soft and the carrots and the celery are like tender crisp. You don't want them mushy. You still want them to still be, have a shape, but not just tender crisp. Okay, so that's pretty good. I always uh, like taste one of my carrots, but sometimes it's kind of hard to um, tell just by looking at them if they're soft enough. And still have a little tiny bit of bite to it, which is what I like. So now, what I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this, but I like it, I'm going to add a third of a cup of white wine, which is about 80 milliliters, and I like the flavor of it. So what I'm going to do is I just have my heat on, on high, I'm just going to let that evaporate, because I just want the flavor of the white wine. And you know the rule when you're using alcohol, if you wouldn't drink it, don't use it in your cooking. <laughs> so. So the uh, alcohol has almost evaporated. So now what I'm going to do is add three tablespoons, 25 grams of all-purpose flour because we're going to make a sauce and we want, and the flour will thicken our sauce. So what I'm going to do is just put it over the top and then turn that. Just. Now you want to cook that flour just a bit. So just stir it and get all the vegetables all covered in that flour. It smells good in here. <laughs> there we go. And then what you will need to have is two and a half cups, which is 600 milliliters of chicken broth, chicken broth or stock. You can use homemade, you can use, I'm just using uh, store-bought. And then add that in. Let's pour that in slowly. And that flour is going to, as we cook this, it is going to thicken everything and then I'm going to also add some ground spices now I like to add a half a teaspoon but one gram of ground thyme I, I think it just I don't know I think it enhances the chicken flavor again you it depends on what you want and like kind of my secret ingredient is I'm going to add a half a teaspoon, one gram of dried tarragon leaves. Now, some people, I, I just think tarragon and chicken is just like the perfect pairing. And now some people say it kind of tastes like licorice. I don't know, I don't know whether I would say that, but what I do know is it's really, 
really good in here. Now, some people do not like that. You can just leave it out if you want. But, or you can, and you got to be careful with tarragon too. I mean, I, I would start with only about a half a teaspoon of the, uh, the dried because, you know, it, if you add too much, it can kind of just overpower your dish. So now, I'm just going to bring that up to a boil. But, of course, uh, chicken, you know, chicken pot pie is kind of a cream-based filling. I, I don't like to get too carried away with, with the uh, cream. I tend to use more chicken broth, but I am going to add a half a cup, 120 milliliters of cream. And you may ask what type of cream, if you want a really rich filling, you could use a heavy cream or you can use a light cream. I've even used a half and half. I mean, it really, uh, how rich do you want it? <laughs> and then, I'm going to add some ground pepper. And this is where I would, I would um, taste your sauce and you can adjust the seasoning. I like lots of pepper and some people actually like to have add a little heat, some crushed red pepper flakes. That's what you could do as well. So I'm going to taste this. Definitely more salt. You know, if, if things, if you, when you're cooking, if Salt really brings out the flavors. So if, if you um, are making something and it just, you taste it, always taste when you're cooking. And it tastes a little bland. Sometimes that is because you don't, and you don't, I mean, as long as you don't taste the salt, but if it tastes a little bland, add a little salt because I find the, um, the salt really helps bring out all those flavors. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, so now I'm just going to cook this and then bring this up because I'm going to also add one cup, 130 grams of, I'm using frozen peas, those little tiny ones, you know, I think they're great. You could add, if you don't want peas, you could add some corn. I'm going to add that in to cook that. And then, of course, the star of the show is the chicken. So you will need three cups, 340 grams of chicken. You can use uh, either a roasted or just a blanched chicken. You can use, if you have, like if you made a roast chicken at home and you have leftovers, you could use that. Personally, I cheat. I figure I'm doing all this work, I'll cheat on the chicken, and I just go buy one of those uh, rotisserie chickens at the grocery store. You know, find a good one, and I'm set. <laughs> so I just um, cut them into bite-sized pieces like this. Now, you could, of course, if, uh, especially Thanksgiving or something, you have a, a turkey, you got lots of leftovers, make, just make turkey pot pies, same way. So I'm just gonna put that in there. And I'm just going to let this simmer for a little bit to thicken up. Okay, so I let it uh, boil away, gently boil away here to cook those um, frozen peas and also to thicken up my sauce. So now I'm going to add some par chopped parsley, about a quarter of a cup, 15 grams. And Unplug that so it's not so noisy. And there we have it. Oh, doesn't that look gorgeous? You know, when I was a kid, my mom would make something like this, and she'd actually spoon it over uh, tea biscuits. So if you want to keep some, try that. It's really good. But we're making pot pies here today. So now, if you want, you can make one large chicken pot pie. You can use a nine or a 10 inch, uh, pretty a deep dish uh, pie plate. That would be fine. 
but I, you know, because it's just Rick and I now, so I, I like to make uh, individual ones. That way I'll have leftovers. I freeze them, and then on those days I don't feel like cooking, I don't have to. I'll just pull them out. And so you can use uh, different things. I used to use these 5-inch, about 15-centimeter uh, metal uh, pie plate, little individual pie plates. But you know, I was at the grocery store recently, and I found these six. These little, um, they're, uh, I think, about 5-inch, 12 and a half or four inch, five, something like that. Um, little aluminum foil ones, they're great. So what I'm gonna do is just evenly divide my filling. And then what I'm going to do, cause that's really hot and I don't wanna roll out my pastry and put um, hot or like cold pastry on a hot filling. So what I'm going to do is just evenly divide it between the five uh, pie plates and then I'm going to let it cool down and when we come back we will finish them off. So now what we're going to do is put the two things together, the pastry with the filling. So what I've done, as you can already see, I've done some of them, but what you want to do is divide your pastry into five equal pieces, which is you want to, if you have a scale, it's about 80 grams for each piece of uh, round of pastry. And then on a lightly floured surface, what we're going to do is roll it out. Now what I like to do is to have an extra one and then I can see on hand so I can see how big I have to roll my pastry. As you can see, just keep moving it and kind of move your pastry around so it's not sticking. If you find it's cracking, it's probably because your pastry is too cold. Conversely, if it's really sticking, it's probably too warm, so just pop it back into the fridge for a few minutes. So what I like to do is just take whatever type you're using and just put it over. And you want a little extra over lap. So I'm just going to... It's not a perfect round, but it'll do. <laughs> so, now you want that... Cool. Mine's cooled off pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just take that, put it over, and then just tuck it and just press it in. You want to make sure you press all the way around because you don't want that pastry lifting up as it bakes. So just pinch, pinch, pinch all the way around. And then what I like to do is take a fork might have to put it in the flour and then I just just a little decorative and then to make sure it's pressed down just tines of a fork I think kind of gives it that more polished look more okay looks good and then just take a sharp knife you want to make I make three slits so that the steam can escape as the uh, as our pies bake. And then what I have here is a large egg. I'm just gonna, you can just use a whisk or just a fork if you want. And then I like to add about a tablespoon of cream. And we're going to brush this on the uh, pastry because that will uh, help with browning. Okay, looks good. And then with a pastry brush, I'll just take and just brush. Try not to get it too thick. You don't want it to pool, but you would just want it to like so. And then what I do, just to add a little more flavor, I've grated some Parmesan cheese. I just use my box grater. You could use a hand grater. And then I just kind of Put a little over the top, adds flavor, a little bit of interest, like so. And I'll do one more because I'm going to bake two. Now, you don't have to bake these right away. You could put them in the fridge, cover them, put them in the fridge, you know, for a day. Or if you're making them in the morning till the evening. Or I always, I always freeze these. 
You know, when I like say I have a, a, some roast chicken left over, I make these and then I just freeze them. And then, so what you do is once you've done like this, then just put them in the freezer, un no, don't cover them. Put them in the freezer just like this until they're frozen and then take them out, wrap them up really good and then put them back into the freezer. You can freeze them for a month or two. And then when you want that really quick, you don't feel like making anything, you could take them out the day, like the night before and let them uh, defrost in the refrigerator. Or sometimes I even, I don't even do that. I take them out like maybe a couple hours before I'm gonna cook them and I just leave them on the counter and then I, I bake them off. So what we're going to do is you need to um, have your oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 190 degrees Celsius. And then I'm gonna bake two of them. And I find, you know, 30 to 35 minutes, depending on your oven. Really what you're looking for is the pastry to be nice and brown. And then what you will notice where the slits are, you will see the, the juices bubbling up and that's when you know they're done. Okay, our chicken pot pies are done. Don't they look gorgeous? Nice, beautiful golden brown and the juices were starting to bubble. There's a couple things I didn't uh, mention. One is, as you can see, when I bake my chicken pot pies, I do put them on a baking sheet just in case you have any spill over and it's easier to get them in and out. And the other thing is, when you put the pastry on top of your uh, chicken filling, if, the, if your filling was a little warm and that pastry gets too soft, pop them into the fridge and get them nice and cold before you bake them off. So at this point, uh, put your uh, baking sheet on a wire rack and then you don't want to serve them like immediately because it's really hot. So I let them sit about 15 minutes. So that's what I'm going to do. And when we come back, we will try one. Okay, so let's try our chicken pot pie. Okay. As, you can, as you can see, I don't know whether you can see that. You got the filling nice underneath pastry. Love the pastry. Mm. Very nice. You have that buttery crisp pastry on top and then the, the filling. I mean, chicken, vegetables, cream sauce. What more do I have to say? It's really great. And you know what? Serve it with a, a tossed salad and you have such a great meal. So try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.